Yeah, hi there, this is Kim Willis, and I've got a, a video stroke audio version of my uh, recent article, which is called How to Be Seen as an Expert Without Being One, article or blog post. And it's actually, you can find it on my blog, kimwillis.net, kimwillis.net. Okay, and that's Kim with an I, K-I-M, short for Kimberly. <laughs> That's people, uh, yeah, my mum called me Kimberly. Um, she actually wanted a daughter, and then when she, <laughs> she found out I was a guy, she thought, well, the name Kimberly was the name I had for, you know, if I had a daughter, and I didn't have a daughter, but it's a unisex type name, so I'm going to call him Kimberly anyway. <laughs> so that was it. But Kim is easier. Now, Easy to remember anyway. How to be seen as an expert without being one. Now, I, I, I created this blog post because I think a lot of people who are looking at becoming internet marketers or at least making money online, they kind of like the idea of specializing in a niche that they are familiar with. And this is a good idea. This is a good strategy. If you're familiar with a niche, you have an interest in a niche, and particularly if you have some skill uh, within that niche, you can create an income by positioning yourself as an expert within the niche. Now, a lot of people don't regard themselves as experts, even though they may have a quite a significant skill set that has been developed over a period of years just as a result of maybe working in a job for 10 years and learning a particular skill. They may have technical skills. You might be able to identify with that. And so one of the questions, I won't really answer it on this uh, video, I'll, I'll do it on another one, but one of the questions that people uh, sometimes ask is, how can I create an, an online income stream from my skill? Can I do that? Well, in simple terms, yes, you can, providing it's a marketable skill. And the way we do it is to create information products, or at least one information product, or create some sort of a consulting service that revolves around that particular skill. And so you can, you can use the internet to find customers and clients, and then as a result of doing that, deliver the service in whichever way you want to deliver it. Um, another way of doing it is to create information products like training courses, ebooks, etc. and sell those courses, how-to type courses. So, I mean, there are so many different niches, aren't there? Let's say that you're a, you're a property renovator and you really know how to renovate properties, but you don't always want to be renovating properties and you like the, kind of like the idea of showing other people how to do it. Well, you can create another income stream by creating training programs, consulting packages, etc., and using the internet to do it. Okay. Now, um, so there's lots of different ways of leveraging a skill set, or indeed leverage, leveraging an interest. Now, what if you don't have a skill set, or if you do, you, you do have a skill set, but you've decided that you don't want to make money from that. You don't want to leverage that particular skill set. But you do have an interest in, an, in another area and you've decided that that particular interest is potentially profitable. You've done a bit of research. I mean, there are there are about six super niches that you could, you could have a look at. Niches such as make money online, that's one of them. Uh, make money from investments, anything to do with investments, including real estate, that's, that's another one. Relationships is another big one, including dating, you know, um, family relationships, anything to do with that. If you have an interest in, in that area, you could uh, you could potentially make money from that. And um, there's there's a few others, health and fitness, anything to do with health and uh, say longevity, um, natural cures, getting fit, building your muscles, working out, all of that. That's that's a big niche as well. There's there's a few of them. You can have a look at those. Maybe you, you have an interest in another area and 
you know, you, the only thing I'd say is that don't find something that's so obscure that you can't make money out of it. it you, you've got, there's got to be a market for whatever it is that you're wanting to specialize in. So, so what I'm assuming for this article is that you, you have, you have a, uh, an interest in an area that you, you have some knowledge of, but you don't really have any expertise. So the question is, how do you position yourself as an expert without being one? Well, it takes a long time to become a true expert. Someone said that you need to invest 10,000 hours before you can truly regard yourself as an expert. Now, I don't know whether the figure is 10,000 hours or 1,000 hours or 20,000 hours, but certainly you do need, you know, to become a true expert, you do need a prolonged exposure to that particular area. And you need to master it. You need to master it. But you can, as an interim measure, oh, let me backtrack from that. Does that mean that you can't make money by creating information products, for instance, from an area that you have an interest in, even though you are not a true expert? No, it does not. You don't have to become a true expert in order to make money from that particular area of interest. But you do need to have superior knowledge compared to the average person out there that has an interest in this particular area. Okay, and and so you need to acquire that that knowledge. You need to acquire some of that superior knowledge. And keep in mind that the sort of people that might be purchasers of training products, information products, for uh, this particular within this particular niche. Uh, they probably don't know much at all. So it wouldn't take that long for you to acquire a lot more knowledge than they have and then start uh, creating products around that. And, and one of the things that we want to do is to create the perception of expertise. Now, I'm not saying here that you would um, deceive people because if that is the case, you're going to be a hollow man. You, 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 you that, and, and you, you, they will, um, they will identify that very quickly. They, they will sense that you haven't got a clue what you're talking about. So you do have to do the grunt work to get at least a layer of knowledge in place. And that's what I talk about in this blog post. I also talk about the advantages of being an expert and how to gain expertise in a new area of interest, which is what I've been really talking about, what I've been saying. And one of the, one of the techniques, you can read it uh, more fully on the blog post itself, but w one of the techniques is to do a crash course in knowledge building and gaining. So what you would do is that you would maybe go to your local library, Go to your local bookshop, do internet searches, look for forums and other blogs on the topic and do a crash course for 30 days. And basically every day for two to five hours a day, you study as much as you can on this particular area of interest, as much as you can. And you take notes and you create bullet points and summary points, etc. 30 days. Does that mean that you'll be maybe, you know, if let's say you're holding down a day job, does that mean that you're going to be coming home and hitting, hitting the research for three, four hours a night? Yeah, it will. It will mean that in all likelihood. Or maybe you get up early before you go into your job. You get up at four o'clock in the morning, whatever. You do what you have to do secure in the knowledge, secure in the knowledge that it's only for 30 days. Now, at the end of that 30 days, do you think it's fair and reasonable to assume that you will have vastly more knowledge about that particular area than you do now? Yes, you're going to say yes, aren't you? Of course, why wouldn't you say yes? At the end of 30 days, you are really going to know quite a lot you may not be a fully fledged 
expert, but you are going to know more than 99% of people who are interested in this topic, whatever that topic happens to be. Now on this blog post, I also talk about creating some, uh, some, some assets, online assets. And by far the most important one is a blog. The reason why I say that, I'm not saying that blog content is more powerful than say video content, um, if we're saying text, you know, text-based content. Uh, for many people, video content is more potent. But I do, I still like written content because it has kind of a, a longevity, a permanence to it. Um, it's something that people can can look at without interruption. They can look at it with with video content. They can't always look at video content. If they're at work and they've got five minutes break between doing jobs or tasks at work, they can't usually turn on video content at work because of the the noise. Whereas with text. They can read the text. They can read the text. Sometimes at home, it's not appropriate to be putting on video content, whereas text, you can you can read text. So I always like to have some text. The other reason why the blog, I say, and don't forget, you can put up video content on your blog anyway, but the, oh, and audio content. But the other reason why I like the blog, and, and, and really it needs to have preference over everything else, including a YouTube channel, a Facebook ex uh, platform, etc., is because you own it and you control it. You do not control your YouTube channel and um, the reality is that they could and can and do shut people down every day of the week. They do. For whatever reason, they have all their weird and wonderful rules and if you don't conform, um, well, they can shut you down. Whereas with the blog, self-hosted, you're hosting it. You're just paying. You're paying your hosting fees every month. As long as you keep paying those hosting fees, that blog is yours, and it's your asset. And blogs can be so sold, and they are sold, and they they can be sold for a pretty penny. If you've got a lot of traffic coming to your blog, if you build it up over time, you can actually sell sell that blog. You can sell it as a going concern because it's your asset, you control it. Whereas you do not control YouTube or Facebook or Google, any of these other platforms, Google Plus, etc. So, um, so once you've done this 30 day crash course, what do you do? Well, you've, you've created notes, you've created bullet points, and from that you can create some content based on your research. And that content can go up on your blog. You can create video versions of the content, just bullet points on a Word document, and just do a screen capture and capture it there. You don't even need to do a PowerPoint presentation. You see, so, so um, I think probably what you should do, I've given you, I hope, food for thought. What you should do is, well, firstly, go, go and look at the full article that I've got on my blog. And what you can do is you can register for my next webinar. I do run free webinars and it's called the Leverage Your Skill webinar. I should call it the Leverage Your Skill or Interest because not everybody wants to leverage their skill or can leverage their skill into an information products business. But they do have other, they do have interests in certain areas so you know you can um, acquire some knowledge and expertise in that particular area and then leverage that particular interest into a money spinner how do we do it we create information products we can offer consulting services high fee consulting services over a hundred dollars an hour people will will pay top dollar if they believe that you can help them get a better result. And part of it, part of that belief requirement is to do with them perceiving you to be somewhat of an expert. 
They don't know if you're a full-blown expert with 10,000 hours of experience behind you or whether you're a quasi-expert. They don't know that. Good marketing can help create the perception of expertise. Okay? But, of course, you've got to back it up with some knowledge. Not, this, not quite to the same extent as a full-blown expert, but some knowledge, more knowledge than they've got, vastly more knowledge than they've got, will help immensely. And you know something, by when you start to create some content based on this research program that you did for 30 days, your knowledge is going to deepen significantly. Because now you're starting to write about it, you're starting to articulate it, and it will go deep into your psyche when you start educating people about what you've learned. And then it starts to become second nature to you. And hey, presto, you're now kind of like an expert. And to me, this is tremendously exciting to think that somebody with no expertise in a given area, obviously, if you've got expertise in a given area and, and you want to leverage that expertise into information products and consulting services, etc., great. But if you're starting off in a new niche, you just have an interest in it and not much more, it's fantastic to think that within... A month, you're going to have vastly more knowledge about that particular area, that particular niche, than 99% of people out there. And then within three months, as a result of creating content around, based on what you've learned, within three months, that knowledge is now going to be deeply embedded in your thinking. And yes, yes. You are an expert. Congratulations. So go to my blog and read the rest of the content there and register your interest for my next webinar. They come along not every week, but you know every maybe every every month, something like that. So uh, just register your interest and when the next one is available, You'll be you'll you'll receive an email. All right, this is Kim Willis. Bye for now.